This is Tom Fox. I'm the Compliance Evangelist, and I'd like to welcome you to the November series of One Month to a More Effective Compliance Program series that I'm running in 2017. This month, we're going to take a look at one month of 360 degrees of communication in compliance. This month's sponsor is Dun & Bradstreet. The only thing that is constant right now in the regulatory environment is change. Supply chain leaders and compliance professionals alike continue to struggle with how to best adequately identify, screen, and gain visibility into ownership structures of third parties and or customers so that they understand exactly who they are doing business with. Companies can knowingly finance goods that are potentially obtained illegally or sold on the black market. Procurement teams that are unaware of third-party activities and have antiquated systems, they put their company at risk. Without proper visibility, these teams could unknowingly be funding terrorism or even engaging in human trafficking. In-depth research is needed to identify ultimate beneficial owners and third-party risks. No business ties to corrupt practices such as human trafficking or money laundering is going to self-report, so companies must take this work on themselves and obtain third-party data needed to determine risk, mitigate exposure, and protect their brand and comply with regulations. Dun & Bradstreet offers an end-to-end comprehensive solution to help organizations tackle this exact complexity. Leverage Dun & Bradstreet's complete due diligence reporting to know your vendor and your third-party partners. Do not expose yourself to undue risk. Contact Dun & Bradstreet today to learn more about vendor onboarding, supply risk management, and comprehensive compliance check. This month I'm going to tackle the concept of 360 degrees of communication and compliance. We're going to take a look at it from a variety of ways and mechanisms. We're going to consider the chief compliance officer and its ro- his or her role in communications. We're going to take a look at how you can facilitate a two-way conversation of communications while sitting in the CCO suite. We're going to consider some of the leadership and other components of a CCO's role and how they will help you have a more robust and indeed holistic approach to compliance. We're going to consider the bottom-up approach to communications by utilizing communications techniques for your employees, third parties, contractors, and those that may come into contractual relationship with your company through the supply chain. We're going to consider 360 degrees of communications through operationalization of compliance and be a very interesting month. I think as a CCO, you will learn quite a bit. And at the end of the month, you will not only have information which will allow you to be a more well-rounded CCO, but bring a much more holistic approach to your compliance function. My year-long series of one month to a more effective compliance program and the November edition of one month 360 degrees of communication and compliance are a part of the Compliance Podcast Network. Day 11, multiplying the influence of compliance. What if you could multiply the impact and effectiveness of your compliance program throughout your company? What if you could do this at a no increase in cost basis? That would be a great boon to any compliance practitioner and a corporate compliance program going forward. Is also something very possible by considering a 360-degree view of communication in compliance using multipliers. This topic was explored by Liz Wiseman and Greg McCowan in their book, Multipliers, How the Best Leaders Make Everyone Smarter. Although it's a book about leadership, it also focuses on multipliers as they identify two types of leaders, diminishers and multipliers. Multipliers are leaders who encourage growth and creativity from their workers, while diminishers are those who hinder and otherwise keep their employees' productivity at a minimum. One of the key findings of the book that are very interesting for not only every chief compliance officer, but every business leader, is that 
to use this practice to further operationalize your corporate compliance program. This is something that's certainly consistent with what we've heard from the Department of Justice, particularly their compliance counsel, now former compliance counsel, Wei Chen. It will also help you understand more fully the concept of 360 degrees of communication and compliance, because in every interaction, you can multiply the power of your communication by using a variety of simple and even straightforward tools and techniques. Multipliers increase, often exponentially, the intelligence of the people around them through communication. They lead organizations or groups that can understand and solve hard problems rapidly, achieve goals, and adapt and increase their capacity over time. On the other hand, diminishers literally drain the intelligence, energy, and capability from the employees or the teams around them. They lead groups that operate in silos, find it hard to get things done, seem unable to do what's needed to reach their goals. Multipliers break down into five disciplines which w- in which they differentiate themselves from diminishers. The first is the talent magnet, who attracts and optimizes talent. The second is the liberator, who creates intensity that requires an employee's best thinking. Next is the challenger, who extends challenges by having others do the hard lifting so that they can stretch themselves. Next, the debate maker, who facilitates a debate between his or her team, which leads to a decision improving a process or issue. And finally, the investor, who instills ownership and accountability with his or her employee base. Interestingly, Wiseman believes that multipliers increase efficiency by two to three times. Wiseman has presented several ways a leader can use the multiplier effect, and I found many of them work particularly well for the compliance practitioner who is working to operationalize a best practices compliance program. This is particularly true because it is through persuasion that that compliance works best by getting others in corporate disciplines to embrace compliance. One of the specific techniques Wiseman discussed was to identify not only what skills there are there on your team, but also what comes easily and natural to them. By doing so, you can get them to more effectively utilize talent in implementing a compliance regime. Interestingly, you can get employees to stretch through a technique Wiseman calls supersizing, which is <clears throat> where you give someone a task they may, that they may be one size too big, but allows them to grow into it. This is certainly applicable when working to operationalize compliance in business units outside the United States, which may have only been dictated to previously, but were not involved in the actual doing of compliance. As a CCO or compliance leader working to more fully operationalize your compliance program, you should work to limit your direct comments to a minimum going forward. This will allow the non-compliance team members to not only stretch themselves, but allows for more impactful intervention when necessary. But the simple fact is you're intervening less. Lewis Sapperman, the CCO at Dun & Bradstreet, said that while he holds the office, he is not the face of compliance. It is his employee base. He has literally multiplied the influence of compliance and the compliance function both inside and outside the company in this, this manner. A key component is to ask questions. Obviously, as a law student and lawyer, I was drilled in the Socratic method, so asking questions is something I'm quite comfortable with. But basically, in this technique, every question is answered by another question. Wiseman's technique of leading with questions works in all five categories of multipliers. The reason it's so successful is that people are smart. They not only want to get things right, but they want to build and eventually figure out how to do it. It is not simply a case of getting out of their way. It is about guiding them with your compliance expertise to come up with not only the right solution, but the solution which will work. Now imagine applying this leadership technique as you are trying to more fully operationalize your compliance program. If you take the approach of leading by asking questions, you are not only providing the guidance to the functional unit, but you also get greater buy-in to the entire concept and process as it becomes their process. The non-compliance team may design it and have ownership over it, even though it may be called compliance. You should work to multiply your influence with, with those you work with so that they work even better. You can use these skills to more fully operationalize your compliance program. 
If you do, you will not only fulfill the requirements of the Department of Justice as laid out in the evaluation of corporate compliance programs, but you will actually bake compliance into the very DNA of your company by making it a part of the way you conduct business. So what are today's three key takeaways? Well, number one, multipliers are leaders who encourage growth and creativity from their workers. And unfortunately, this contrasts with number two, diminishers are those who hinder and otherwise keep their employees' productivity at a minimum. And number three, well, multiply the influence of the compliance function both inside the out and outside of the organization. Once again, if employees come up with a compliance solution, it's not the compliance function solution, it's their solution. And by doing this, you have operationalized your compliance program by putting it on the front lines of your organization. It also demonstrates compliance with the Department of Justice's evaluation of corporate compliance programs. And if you document this, I think you'll have a very strong case if you ever have to go in front of the DOJ and answer any of these questions. This is Tom Fox. Hope you've enjoyed day 11 of one month to 360 degrees of communication and compliance, and I hope you'll join me tomorrow for day 12. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, and I'd like to thank you for listening to this episode of One Month to 360 Days of Communication and Compliance. If you have listened to this podcast on iTunes, I would greatly appreciate it if you would rate our podcast as it would help in our rankings and also help get the word out about the only daily compliance podcast involving the nuts and bolts of compliance. Also, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at tfox at tfoxlaw.com. Finally, I'd like to thank our sponsor for this month, Dun & Bradstreet. I hope you will join me tomorrow for another episode. The podcast series in November, one month to 360 degrees of communication is a part of the Compliance Podcast Network.